Texas. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise, and we are digging into Dell World because all the hottest trends are happening at the infrastructure level, at the application level, at the mobility level, and everything in between for the enterprise, the consumerization of IT. It's exciting to dig in, and uh, I'm John Furrier, again, John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle. I'm joined with my co-host. Hi everybody, I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're here with Darius Zamarian, who's the Vice President and General Manager of Dell's Enterprise Systems and Solutions Group, a new group at Dell, really designed to go after the converged infrastructure Op market opportunity, which we were the first to define that and size that, it's huge, it's about a $400 billion TAM, so Dell is responding to that organizationally. Darius, welcome. Thank you, Good as to always, see you again. Yeah, we saw you uh, this June uh, at the Dell Storage Forum. In Boston, at, yep. at the time, you okay. were the networking guy. I was. <laughs> now you've uh, been promoted, congratulations. Marius Haas is in, we yep. know Marius from his days uh, at HP and even before that. Yep. So you guys are really going after this uh, converged infrastructure play. Talk about the organizational change and what what drove that? Yeah, very much so. T pleasure to be here all the time, John and Dave as well. Um, if you think about what we've done over the last three to five years, the whole idea of uh, arguably spending $12 billion worth of acquisitions is allow us to accumulate the necessary technology assets and people capabilities to finally be able to culminate into what we can call system and solutions, uh, uh, you know, orientation for Dell next generation. Uh, the reason why you know, I was a logical, uh, perhaps, candidate to do this is that I came from the networking heritage where by definition, converging infrastructure has become very much you know, the next conversation with our customers. And so the formation of this new business unit called Enterprise System and Solutions, uh, it should be seen as a, I call it a p &L that sits on top of our server storage and networking because the combination of the three, plus of course system management, and plus the collaboration with our software group, can give a set of capabilities that uh, before were not available to us. And right now, by formalizing this, we can actually talk to our customers even more straightforward and being able to have a conversation around what really matters, which is the application, the private cloud, and the infrastructure being built much more integrated, much more converged than ever before. So, so Dari, so so I want to ask you, this is really an important topic to us because it's one of our cover coverage areas, um, big data and uh, now software-led infrastructure. Yep. So uh, Wikibon put out the first groundbreaking research around uh, what we're calling software-led infrastructure, yep. which, is a, which is a way for us, as we've been doing the research, to modernize the definition of converged infrastructure. Okay. So one thing that we've observed, the customers that you guys are serving as well as your competition is, converged infrastructure was defined many years ago. So a lot's changed in the past just three years, okay? So, you know, as you guys are transforming, the message is obviously that you're going after this modern infrastructure, as Michael Dell sure. kind of responded to my question yesterday yeah. around modern, you know, I wanted to drill on that, and that was a word he used, and we use that as well. So we are, have this notion of software-led infrastructure. So um, share with us within Dell, because it really is a nice architecture. You know, obviously service stores networking, they all have to work together and software plays on top of it. But software-led infrastructure, talk about this modern definition from your standpoint. Obviously we have a report, you go to wikibon.org, you find that, but you know, m this modernization trend uh, is happening. IT and CIOs are all looking at their infrastructure, they are looking at cloud, they are looking at software to be differentiated. And obviously there's margin expansion <laughs> in there too for, for, the, for the people sure. who are providing those durable goods. Sure, sure. No, very much so. The, um, you know, in a way the definition of a modern data center starts first with recognizing that the real value that the customers want to get out of the data center is the running of the applications. And you can run applications either on a very confined basis and fine tune your hardware and your software system management for those, or you can actually go and create a private cloud where you have a method to be able to take advantage of multiple applications sitting on top of a private cloud. I will argue that the advent of a modern data center was really triggered by virtualizing the whole uh, data center itself, the whole server stuff. And what is being happening is right now that the virtualization applied to servers, when it catches on as we are doing collectively in the industry to the storage and the network side, creates an interesting way to uh, disintermediate in a way the underlying hardware and the application that sits on top, and our job as a solution provider is to be able to provide the best possible optimized uh, infrastructure that allows to have a virtualization layer to sit on top, but all at the benefit of the applications that the customer wants to put on displays. And a key topic is around how do you work with a customer 
to actually recognize that they are typically in brownfield environments and they don't start from scratch. And we have developed a whole set of methodologies with our professional services group to be able to actually move the customers from the legacy applications into a private cloud-based data center and our technology efforts helps in doing that in a much more economical, fast uh, you So know, what you're saying, what you're saying here, I mean, the old way was, you know, you had infrastructure application, you had middleware. That was kind of the old model when it was <laughs> monolithic and servers. That's cool, but, but with this new way, virtualization really is enabling this new kind of software layer, if you will. Very much so. Um, that's, so okay, so that being said, um, Talk about what that means. Okay, so we're, we see the hottest trend out there is software-defined networking. Yeah. You know, VMware bought Nasira. Sure. Um, there's all kinds of uh, conversation around hypervisor agnostic. Sure. Um, so, so virtualization in particular. And, and what does all this mean? What does software-defined networking mean? Sure. What does software-defined data center? Sure. And what is that trend? Is it just virtualization or is it other software playing there is within a, the sandbox? Be, 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 fantastic question. In fact, uh, the word virtualization and the whole phenomenon of virtualization, I would argue is only the trigger that makes all of this possible. Uh, so let's dissect a bit more about the notion of what a software-defined data center, for the matter, a software-defined networking is all about. I would argue that the value to a customer is about how dynamically the network and the infrastructure can be customized to the needs of an application. So if you think about the essence of software-defined networking, the way we are going about it is to say that the application has certain networking needs. It could be bandwidth requirements, it could be quality of service, it could be security requirements, it could be opening VPN tunnels, whatever it is, our ability is to actually profile the application, use a controller in between to be able to dispatch the instructions to the underlying network so that the application can have the most optimal network for the operation the application needs. If you do this across both the network, the storage, and the server, now you have an opportunity to program your data center in a real time, as real time basis as you can, given the needs of the application that sits on top. Okay, if that so, makes sense. So you Absolutely, made yeah. the Force 10 acquisition some other smaller tuck-ins. Do you have no. all the pieces now that compete in this marketplace? Well, you never hold the pieces because by definition, technologies continue to move. But I would argue that we have a lot of the pieces that were required to go to the next wave of system and solutions. The whole idea for us to have bought Force 10 as an example, it was an absolutely stepping stone to have enough critical mass of uh, data center networking. And our ability to have built a very powerful blade-based uh, uh, switch that now connects to a very powerful top of rack and it goes to the distributed core, you'll argue is the most economical and the most elegant way to build a data center. Without that piece, I will still be at the mercy in a way of other networking vendors to be part of the overall solution. But even Gale Technologies, that we yeah. actually acquired just on November 16 and we closed, it was an absolutely necessary step to be able to provide a workload orchestration on top of the hypervisor and to be able to do converged infrastructure management. So if you think about this right now, the 12G servers that we've been all along, the progress we made with the, surf, the, the storage side and all the uh, progress we made on the first stand for the data center and the Gale acquisition, now you have the building, building blocks, the elements, for a converged infrastructure proposition that we're going to put a lot of emphasis on. Now, one of the, John mentioned our report on software-led uh, infrastructure. One of the findings we had was, you know, the commodity piece, you know, services on top of commodity hardware, that's really nothing new. I mean, people yeah. have been thinking about that. Certainly Google's been doing it for a decade. But the key is the metadata management. You've got this yeah. metadata locked in all these yeah. silos. Yeah. What's Dell's software strategy with yeah. regard to yeah. allowing what you said, that dynamic you yeah. know, reaction to customer needs? No, very much so. In fact, you saw yesterday in the um, um, uh, Q&A session that mm -hmm. even John Swainson, Michael Dell had, uh, where John spoke very specifically about the ability to correlate events and correlate data across multiple areas of your software stack. Imagine if you can have uh, a, a, a slowing down of a CRM application being correlated to the fact that there is a particular switch not being functioning anymore. Now you have a complete visibility of your data center and you'll be able to actually move around and being able to even proactively look for the optimization of the data center and that is only possible when you have Quest on one side, when you have identity management capabilities on the other side and you have security and et cetera coming together. So the correlation of the trends and the correlation of the data in the data center is allows for an optimal you know, ongoing uh, you know, you know, applications running on top of the Machines managing that, not Machine people. managing yeah. that as opposed to the uh, human being managing so, that, by all means. So Dario, gets back, let's get back to the application. I want to kind of drill on that because obviously the application explosion yep. Yep. Um, is a real trend and <laughs> everyone's seeing it at many levels. One is the agile ability of DevOps. I mean, you guys have been doing oh a lot of work in DevOps, yep. which means essentially there's more applications, more diverse applications yep. being developed faster and deployed faster. Yep. All that's great stuff and it's being, we cover that. But what that means is, is a couple things. So I want to, 
actually ask a question three, about three things. So um, there's been some innovations and some areas of improvement that people are working on. One, Flash. Yep. Flash has enabled uh, architectures to be different, caching layers, you know, both on the SAN side and on the storage side and also on the server side. So I want you to talk about what Flash means to the enterprise. Uh, two, um, the networking side. Obviously networking has been a bottleneck around yep. I.O. latency and dealing with provisioning of apps, especially within a virtualized environment. And three, with the applications being so promiscuous in this consumerization experience, there's a security holes yep. everywhere. So three things, Flash, yep. the networking bottlenecks being, over, uh, being yep. uh, overcome from whether it's automation, configuration, manual, yep. all that stuff, and then security. Yep. How do they all play in? So can you talk about yep. all three? Yeah, let, 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 let's try it. These are big topics as we all know, right? Uh, We've got 30 uh, minutes of that panel. Uh, <laughs> we, could, we could spend 30 minutes the, on this. The, oh, we could spend probably hours on this topic. Um, let's think of Flash as a way to arguably revolutionize how data becomes available to the application in a real time basis. Meaning that if you think about, uh, there, is, there, is, there is really, you know, the optimal way to distribute on a tier basis the data. And you can say, when do I put it off premise? When do I have it in premise? When do I have it uh, close to a NAR disk? How do we have it close, close to a flash, close to a memory? Well, that is the storage subsystem. But all of this transformation and having a flash based system is primarily to make available to the application the data as fast and as locally as possible and making sure therefore the infrastructure continues to pay attention to what the application is. So in other words, I would put the flash re revolution. So it's way that's, that's the acceleration there. of data, exactly which, is, which plays well it, with the It's apps. the acceleration of the data and I call it the locality of the data, whereby the application will have access to the data at the right time, at the right place, and making sure that there is minimal latency and minimal, so to speak, delays for the data access. So would you say that's table stakes in the future? I will certainly think it's table stakes in the future for the simple reason that the application is going to become more and more demanding, more and more data is going to be there, and therefore connecting the dots yeah. between okay. what the application is and what the data is, is going to become much more as stable stakes and architectures as well. Yeah, we, we agree with that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, sure <laughs> you do. I'm sure you do. But you know, it's good that you guys are on that because that's where, every, that's, that's a bottleneck, but it's acceleration at the same time, so. It's, it's very much so. But that's the, part the, of your the, core the, strategy. The, you have Flash in there. Very much part of the core strategy to have a whole uh, set of advancements on the storage subsystem that we put together for the active infrastructure. The second topic that we discussed right here was network and this notion of bottlenecks. I think that with advent of uh, 10 gig at the server level and then 40 gig becoming more and more for the fabric itself, I think we've seen very good advancements whereby the optimization of the east-west traffic, whereby virtual machines talk to virtual machine way more than going in and out of the data center, has brought up this new architecture that you can call distributed core, that you can call- This is software, you know, this is the this software is, defined this is both. This is both the architecture to which you have a spine and leaf on how you actually scale the edge of the network, that is a physical side of it, mm -hmm. and of course we work with the usual suspects on the silicon uh, you know, uh, merchant side, you know, the Broadcom, the Intels and so forth, but equally important is the software that powers this scaling of the backbone of the data center network. Uh, we're working on that. For provisioning, that, automation. All, all of those elements, i.e. The, 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 the wiring up front for 10 gig going to 40 and being able to scale, the ability to actually to provision it quickly so a switch can be provisioned as easily as a server, the ability to actually have automation kicking in so you can actually have open flow standards and as the end, that's the whole uh, changes and evolution that we have in becoming a virtual network. The third area was around security. Well, clearly, you know, none of this, you will argue, can be to the satisfaction of a CFO, a CIO, and a CEO, uh, you know, without having enough elements of security to be able to protect both from a liability point of view, but even more importantly, the end applications having to have, uh, you know, both the infrastructure security side as well as the end user being protected from what happens up on the internet. And thanks to acquisition that we made like in SonicWall and SecureWorks, not only we have the architectural element with SonicWall, but we also have the monitoring element with SecureWorks, where we can actually help our customers put together data centers or end offices, branches and so forth, and protect both from the outside threats coming from the internet, but also securing a virtualized data center for uh, the modern data so center. So that's the core forward. of the edge. That is exactly. That's what it's Marius it's was talking about it's yesterday. It's the core and the edge, and it's the end user and the applications. All of these are the elements of a security architecture that we can bring to our customers. Now. Darius, I want to ask you about the organization. We yeah. started off talking about this new organization, and my contention has always been that you got to get the organization right. Not only, yeah. not only on the, the vendor side, but also yeah. the users. So, and I saw this was VCE, they didn't have the organization right. IBM itself didn't have the organization right. They just put Andy Monsha in charge. I would say Dell realizing you've got to have a leader across these server storage and networking areas no. to integrate these. Now, so th that's good, nice, good move, smart move. 
How does it work? So you, you're a, a virtual P&L, um, you got to be careful about double counting, and I know you yeah, guys yeah. don't do that, so sure. can you talk yeah. about that a little bit, is my first question, and I want to talk about the implications for customer organization. Sure. Um, no, it, it's a great question, because you're absolutely right. If you don't get the organization right, uh, all of this might be gyration and, 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 and kind of you know, waste of time. Um, think of this in the following way. There are two ways to make new products or new capabilities. Uh, uh, one is a short-term ability to bring together what we got. The fact that we have a fantastic proposition on a data center, the fact that we have a fantastic version on storage and servers, uh, you want to take advantage of that, and you can call that an integration job at the beginning. My no number one job to start with is to actually bring those together and work with the other general managers and to put those in a way that are pre-integrated, pre-validated, and easy to deploy and easy to consume from the customer. Job number one. The organization, I think, is structured that way and they have an opportunity to sit at the table as, in a way, you can call it the chairman of a uh, you know, you know, architected uh, set of conversation with, our, with my peers. Uh, but then the opportunity is, as we evolve, is to actually have focused investments for new form factors and new architectures, they may not come logically by just summing up these three areas, but it has to be done from scratch. My charter with this newly formed enterprise system and solution is to do both. Integrate best that we have today, because the customer already likes the proposition, but also go after organically and inorganically of the new uh, integrated systems that actually may have to be developed and, and funded in a separate basis. Okay, so you measure that, but now, the revenue flows into the individual groups. The right? revenue flows actually in, 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 in two ways. Uh, first, uh, you know, I want to make sure that we can uh, motivate our sales individuals and we can work with our customers and measure the units of pre-integrated systems. Yeah. So very much the P&L, that is a integrated system and solutions, will measure both the pre-integrated system as a unit of revenue, as well as the reference architectures. And then, behind the scenes, we do the accounting translations yeah. so I can have a correlation between the revenue that goes into network and the OPEX spent on networking. But we don't want to have that accounting on the back end to be on the way of how we put together right, the solution right, right. for the customer. So this is very much not what I call a shadow PL, but a real PL because it creates the right conversations and the right mechanism of execution, even downstream with the field and with the channel partners. Well, real PL in the sense that you can allocate investments according to the opportunity. That's exactly Okay, so now what about the customers? Now, the customers aren't organized. Generally, most customers aren't organized to exploit converged infrastructure. They still got oh. storage server and networking people. You know, some of this, actually, some of your customers might yes. be. You know, the yes. smaller customers yes. might be in a better yeah. position. Yeah. But what's your uh, very, angle very, on that? Very much so. I think what, what we notice on the customer base is that first of all, there is a, a big variety of customers, all the way to perhaps the most sophisticated global, you know, global 500, all the way to the mid market, even small business. So having recognized the level of profiles of a customer, what we typically notice is this: the most successful way for a customer to modernize the data center, to bring converging infrastructure, is when they come with a predisposition of changing their organizational boundaries entirely. When you have somebody that leads within the customer side a virtualization project or a data center project, mm -hmm. typically that individual, that executive, then most likely reports directly to the CIO and reports very much higher up, will be able to actually transform the company within because then you don't have, so to speak, the political infights between the networking admin and the storage or the server admin is somewhat at odd. So we notice that the maximum success for us to go in and speak about system solutions and coverage infrastructure is when we find the frame of mind on the customer that says, I'm ready to also uh, you know, redefine the, 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 the division of labor on how my IT admins actually come together. Now, I have, uh, you've talked about both pre-integrated systems and reference architecture. Sure. So you've, you offer the spectrum, because right. there's always pressure in the channel to unbundle, they sure. want to use somebody exactly. else's servers or somebody exactly. else's storage. Exactly. You allow that. You, we, you we, we allow that for a very simple reason. You know, the, 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 there are two kind of, kind of realities here that we never can never uh, neglect. Number one, every customer is somewhat different. Yes, our objective on a pre-integrated system is to tap into the 80% commonality and say, look, we've seen many like you, and although you have a bit of a difference, why would we take advantage of our experience and our knowledge that we accumulate by talking to a lot of customers? That you can call it is a pre-integrated system. But we also know that a customer may say, look, I already spent enough money uh, with somebody else's to do our storage subsystem, or I want to make sure that I preserve, you know, some, uh, you know, switching from an alternative uh, networking vendor. We don't want to neglect the opportunity that we can evolve right. with the customer. So a reference architecture allows for the re recognition of other components. So this does not become a forklift for the customer; it becomes an evolution, and therefore you can go all the way to a pre-integrated system, if you like, or all the way to a evolution of reference architectures to have the customer journey coming along with us. Now, why the new branding from V-Star to Active Systems? 
the V-Start still around, but what, what was behind yeah, that? What was behind it is, in a way, the recognition that this is going to become, and it still is, a huge emphasis for Dell moving forward. We picked the word active as a, you know, a label, in a way, to bring together a bunch of properties mm -hmm. around the uh, uh, flexibility of it, the ability to actually make your hardware and infrastructure alive for the application. What we didn't want to do is to be bounded for some form of legacy, and therefore the word active infrastructure, active solutions, active system, active system manager is a whole concerted effort to bring together all the pieces of the puzzle, and therefore moving forward, active infrastructure is the umbrella okay. you know, uh, marketing, but then downstream, we'll uh, activate this as we put together the solutions for the sales, for the channels, we'll see us doing marketing around this, and therefore, uh, is an opportunity, frankly, to bring together a number of pieces that together before we were not being as, as aligned as right now, and you see us doing a lot of Okay, uh, so V-Star stays. Right. stays uh, V-Star uh, stays, as but as it will be evolved okay. so that it, it becomes an active system as well. Into the umbrella. And the primary okay. element is that when you have an active system manager, now the underlying, so to speak, uh, you, know, you know, existing products that we have become part of a family, yeah. and the customer can be future-proof from an investment point of view that says, I bought V-Star, why don't you bring me along on the active infrastructure value proposition? You do that by allowing them to adopt an active system manager and now they become all active systems. Dario, I want to ask you uh, my final question. Yeah, yeah. I know we're getting up on time here, but um, obviously a very important area for customers right now is this reconstruction of the data center. Um, when I say reconstruction, I mean it's a build out. And you know, on the consumer side, you say you're in the Dell Ventures and you know, the consumer side's kind of, you know, thinning out, the bubble burst, so to speak, in a way, good bubble. But there's a real boom in the enterprise right now. Yeah. Venture capital's investing in, in flash startups, SDN, software to find anything yep. is it's getting yep. a lot of traction. It's obvious people are seeing this transformation is real. Yep. Yep. Uh, even though we're looking at a financial cliff in 19 days, uh, <laughs> with the, in the, here in the US and abroad, um, there's real work being done. So I want to ask you, how are you marketing um, this group, and what's your main you know, horse that you're riding into the customers? Is it, is it uh, software-led, is it software-defined, is it you know, just converged infrastructure, kind of an old definition? Um, is that working, is it big data? Um, how are you going to your customers, and, and, and what, what are you positioning? What's your core yeah. position? Is it software-defined yeah. data center? Yeah. No, the, 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 the leading conversation with our customers uh, uh, starts at a higher level, to be honest. It starts at understanding uh, what do you want to do? Uh, uh, if you want to create, let's say, a collaborative environment, uh, and the customer has uh, hundreds or even dozens of users, uh, how do you put together, let's say, a Microsoft uh, collaboration suite, as an example? And, and so the conversation starts either at the application workload, and what do you want to do with it, all the way from moving from a legacy to modernization, and bringing in the underlying converged infrastructure solutions, or even a private cloud, as a way to solve that kind of problem, all typically starts from a different point of view that says, I know I'm going to run a lot of applications and I want to modernize my data centers because I want to spend less consumption, a higher density, uh, you, know, uh, you, know, you know, simpler operations, and therefore the second way to start a conversation is through a private cloud conversation and bring in converged infrastructure and pre-created system under that, you know, you know, call it slipstream of conversations. So typically the customer doesn't ask us, tell me more about software-defined networking, or tell me more about software-defined data center. We talk about it yeah, as yeah, a way yeah. to demonstrate okay. there are properties around it, yeah, but typically yeah. it's the application of the private cloud that drives the conversation. Okay, so um, I'll ask a different question. I, obviously, converged infrastructure is kind of an old definition. It's kind of played in the mind of the customer. Yeah, they're all been investing, and, and now you have this big push for top-line growth and bottom-line reductions of, of being more efficient. So sure. you get efficiency, which is you know, doing more with less and sure. making it all work, but also with apps, they're driving revenue. So sure. there's a revenue focus. So, is it like we're, Dell's differentiating itself by saying we're, the, we're betting on cloud, we're also betting on, is it just converged infrastructure? What's the core positioning that, the, the, that when you go to the customer saying Dell's better because of? The, 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 the core positioning with the customer we have right now is this. The customer is in different stages, depending on geography, depending on size, depending on the legacy applications of the transformation of the team infrastructure. And they all know that because they read the papers, they talk to their neighbors, they talk to their uh, you know, mentors or whatever, that there is an opportunity to save money, do it better and so forth. So our uh, always starting point with the customer is uh, we want to be in the private cloud converge infrastructure, giving you the building blocks of what it takes to go from legacy to modern, and I would not suggest that converge infrastructure arguably is, is a gone phenomenon. No, I it's, would argue it's that changing. Are, it it's is evolving. Changing, it is changing and is evolving to the point that right now we can actually do the next click, so to speak, of converge infrastructure, where you bring together even a tighter level of power efficiencies, a tighter level of operations, and therefore a higher level for the application. Our conversation starts with, you know, what do you want to get done 
can we actually make sure that we can help you with a professional services engagement if you like to, a consultative approach, and that drives uh, typically uh, you know, either data center conversations, security conversations, and user bring your own devices conversations. That is what we are both training our sales force and also trying to differentiate ourselves. Okay, so basically power efficiency, accelerated data access to the apps, automation and scale with software and virtualization and application All performance. of those are the ingredients yes. for the customer to see a quantifiable value okay. in transforming the legacy environments yeah. to the new ones, John. Yeah. Awesome, well, and I think that's what we'll be drilling on this week. Thanks for coming yeah. on theCUBE. Um, this modern discussion, very relevant. Uh, customers want to know what that means. They obviously, they're not throwing out conversion, it's just changing. They all have to buy server storage and networking. I mean, those are the, the native ingredients. It's just how that's changing with virtualization. I uh, really appreciate your, your conversation you. here. Very relevant. This is theCUBE. Uh, we'll be right back with our next guest right after this short break. Thank you. All right. Ten years ago, the video news business believed the internet was a fad. The science is settled. We all know the internet is here to stay. Bubbles and busts come and go, but the industry deserves a new 